good morning uh, talking about malwares almost we uh, finished all the malwares right so we discussed about computer virus worm trojan host these are the three harmful uh, common commonly attacked malwares right almost similar maybe the way of attacking the behaviors almost similar but as we discussed they have their own differences right so malware we we had three important malwares virus computer worms and also uh, trojan horse so in addition to these three common uh, malwares we also discussed some of the other malwares right so, so hope you remember we discussed about adware uh, we discussed about a hijacker or browser hijacker and also i explain about uh, phishing so though the phishing is something different than a malware but it is a malicious attack or it is a harmful uh, action right so it is uh, one of them uh, and uh, what else we discussed uh, i explain about uh, spam not not in the last class but when we discuss about emails we discuss about spam right so there is nothing to take again so remember spam is unwanted emails saved in our inbox uh, actually not inbox generally the incoming mail should should be saved in inbox but they are diverted to spam folder because they are suspicious right so we discussed about them in uh, unit number 3 so i i think that it is not important to take them again okay so spam also one of the malware right so we have one more one more malware to be explained but i have to take two of them even though your your book or your syllabus has one more but i i want to take another one also okay so look there is an one called bot right there is a malware called bot so this term has been derived from the word uh, robot right so robot so these three letters are taken to form this malware bot okay let me explain the term bot so bot is uh, something which doesn't need uh, human interaction right it is autonomous it is automated uh, malware so so when malware sorry when bot comes into your computer it looks like a spyware so it it can hide itself in in your computer and without knowing yourself without knowing the computer user it may have a communication secretly with another computer or in fact with another bot which is in another computer so bot comes here and uh, hides itself right and has a communication has a secret communication with another bot in another computer so when there is a communication between two bots right you know some sensitive informations can easily be stolen and sent to the another end maybe through email or some other applications your vital informations can be sent to another computer so this is bot but remember this is autonomous right so without a small interaction of a user it can work so this is harmful and also it is uh, sometimes it is tough to identify your antivirus can can uh, uh, detect but sometimes it's it's dif difficult but later we will discuss about antivirus and other other safety measures right okay so this is called bot so remember the harmful action which uh, bot i mean does okay right finally mm, okay have a look at the list first okay so these are the things we listed so computer virus okay we studied worms trojan horse adware and just now i explain about bot hijacker or sometimes sometimes called browser hijacker and phishing and spam right in addition to them this is bot look here look at the description which i have given it is a software application that is 
program to do certain tasks. Bots are automated, which means they run according to the, the instructions without a human user to start, right? There is no need for a human user to start this uh, malware. It can start itself. They do repetitive tasks because they are hidden in, in our computer. So they all the time, they monitor our, our activities and they do the uh, same tasks again and again, like stealing our passwords, usernames and other sensitive informations and passing them to the other end. Okay, so this is what, right. So let me take a last one, ransomware, right? Ransomware, this is another malware, but this is sometimes very harmful because let me explain, even though it is not categorized in your book, I take it because this is also uh, one of the, I can't say common, but it is harmful, right? Look, so yes, it's a malware. So when it comes to your computer, uh, it does some uh, bad things. O almost all the malwares do bad things, but this is very, very, uh, I mean, uh, serious because when it, it comes to your computer, uh, it may have some of your files and folders under its control, right? It takes your files and some other application, maybe some vital folders in its control, which means you are unable to open them. You are unable to use them because those files, maybe the, the ownership or the privilege is under this uh, ransomware. So when you open the, them, you can't open because they have been locked, right? They have been locked by this ransomware. So after locking these files and important information, this ransomware uh, demands the user to pay some money. Right, so it looks like, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, catching some people or, I mean, stealing your peers were important things and demanding you uh, to pay money. So, you know, this happens in the world, right? Even any, any vital things of you, your properties can be, uh, can be uh, hacked or can be taken uh, into someone's custody and they can uh, demand you. Right? They can, uh, I mean, blackmail or something to pay some amount of money. So here also same thing happens. Since your files and folders have been locked, since they are unable to open, right? So you don't have any way because you need them. You need them because they are very important files, right? So now they are locked by this uh, ransomware. So now someone will contact you through email or some other medium saying that you have to deposit a kind, I mean, sum of money in, in, a, in a bank account. So this is kind of threatening. The, the threatening in, in every malware, there is a threatening, but this is very, very serious. So when you deposit the money, right, when you agree the demand, then only the files and folders are unlocked. Then only they are, or they become, uh, I mean, uh, become uh, useful usefulness for you right so you are unable to use them until uh, you you uh, you agree for the particular i mean demand right so this is very serious look at them ransomware is a form of malware that locks the user out of their files or their device even sometimes your device can be locked you are unable to use your mobile phone you are unable to use your computer they have been locked right then demands on uh, anonymous online payment to reach to access. So after locking them, you will get an anonymous, uh, I mean, demand or anonymous call or anonymous email uh, to pay uh, a particular amount of money, right? Then only they will be unlocked. Okay, so this is called ransomware. All right, so these are the, these are the malwares to be, to be remembered. But again, I tell you, remember the first three, virus, malware, sorry, virus, worm, trojan horse. So in addition to them, remember the phishing because phishing is important. This is very common and also often asked in exam. So remember the phishing and also I would recommend to remember this one, a hijacker, right? Remember the hijacker. I don't think that they are, the other, others are important, but since they are listed in your book, anything can be asked, right? So if you can remember everything, 
but uh, the malwares which I listed, right? Those five, right? Virus, worm, Trojan horse, hijacker, and also uh, phishing, right? These are very, very important, often asked in exams, right? Okay, right. So let me take one more thing before we proceed to the next one. See, you may have heard this word, right? Look here, spyware. Yes, spyware is a kind of malware, but uh, you know, spyware is a common term. Even Trojan horse can be a spyware. Uh, even a bot can be a spyware because spyware is something which monitors, which supervises our activities and taking or stealing some of the vital information and passing them to, to the others. So we, we cannot understand that they are in, in our computer. So without the knowledge of us, right, they secretly monitor all these activities, all these uh, data entry and capture some of the vital information and pass them to the other end. So this is spyware. So if you, if you approach high, sorry, this one bot or maybe uh, Trojan horse in this manner, then you can understand they are spywares. So spyware is, is, a, is a common term used to describe the malwares which do spy activities, right? They, they hide themselves in a computer without the knowledge of the user and they capture some of the vital informations and pass them to the other end, right? So that is spyware. So even Trojan horse, these bots and everything can be categorized as spyware, okay? Right. All right, so let's move to the other one. Right. So now we discussed about, uh, we discussed about malwares, right? So as we can see, all these malwares do damages, do harmful activities, but look at their harmful activities. So look at their, their behaviors. The behaviors are different, right? Virus has some sort of behaviors. Worms have some different behaviors. Maybe phishing uh, has another one. So all these malwares do bad things. But of course, their characteristics or maybe way of attacking, everything is different, right? So hereafter, we will have to discuss about how to be safe from this malware or how to prevent them from accessing our computer because all of them are harmful, right? So definitely they must be blocked or they must be stopped. But it is not easy to discuss one by one, like how to prevent virus or how to prevent worm or how to prevent um, hijack. So it is not good. So we will discuss about how to prevent malware in general. So also the fact is there. So if you want to block all these malwares, you know have, you have some common activities. You have some common um, steps. Right? So it is not important to stay, take steps for preventing virus separately, for preventing worms separately or Trojan horse. When we do some activities, when we take some steps, mostly we can uh, stop all these malwares. Okay, so hope you, you understood the things which I'm going to take, right? So here, let's see how to prevent the malware. Okay, so you know the first one, the most important one is using antivirus. Have a look at this, using antivirus. And also, of course, updating that one uh, regularly. So what is it? So, you know, antivirus, right? Antivirus is a kind of software, kind of program used to detect and remove all these malwares, even though the, the name is antivirus. Have a look at that, antivirus. So it seems that it is against virus. Maybe at the time when antivirus was first developed or first introduced, they were introduced only against virus. But then from time they, they changed to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, prevent or change to detect all these malwares. So virus can detect the worm, virus can detect the bot and everything. Sorry, not virus, antivirus, right? Antivirus can detect the virus, a worm, trojan horse, bot, hijacker. So 
we can simply say antivirus can detect all these malwares and give security to computer because this these antivirus softwares after detecting them they remove these malwares so when virus try to enter into your computer it has been detected by antivirus soon after that it it uh, removed so your computer will be safe right so that is antivirus okay so don't forget antivirus is an is a system software in grade 10 we discussed hope you remember the types of software right we have uh, we have application software and also we have system software uh, there are three types of system software operating system utility programs and also translator this antivirus is a kind of utility right because you know it, what utility is right if if it is utility it always increases the performance of the computer so since antivirus is installed in your computer virus always detected and removed so when your computer is virus free your computer's performance will be increased that's why it is categorized as utility program remember that okay right so i tell you some of the other things about antivirus later but remember now it is antivirus to to remove all these malwares but remember i have used another word there uh, another phrase there update you have to update them. having antivirus in your computer doesn't i mean give a uh, complete security it can give the security up to some extent but you can't say that your computer is completely safe so after installing the antivirus you have to update it regularly why okay look i i i i will explain see when you downloaded the antivirus or when you purchased the antivirus that software can remove or can detect the viruses which are known to that antivirus so at that time when antivirus is developed you know it has been developed to detect some of the known viruses because you know it's a program antivirus is a program so it has been instructed to detect some of the known viruses with symptoms so that antivirus that you have you have in, installed in your computer can detect the known antiviruses and known worms and other things but you know every minute there may be new viruses created and spread maybe every minute right that is possible right around the world there are so many millions of viruses are created every day so now remember does your antivirus know those new and viruses which are created recently never because your antivirus remember your antivirus is a program it is not a human it is a program that program detects those viruses it is because of the instructions given to antivirus about how to how to identify them so with such instructions your antivirus detect the virus but what happens to the new viruses so assume you you have that antivirus now there is a new sorry new virus is trying to enter into your computer new virus try trying to enter into your computer but what happens now your antivirus doesn't know that the that the vi that the new thing is a virus because it's a new virus with different symptoms different characteristics so now your antivirus looks at him and he your antivirus thinks that it is a good program because it doesn't detect any bad things any bad characters so it immediately allows this is harmful so what should you do you have to update your antivirus regularly what does it mean so updating antivirus regularly means your antivirus right may have new uh, pieces of software for detecting new viruses for every day there may be a new viruses for for detecting and identifying or removing new viruses your antivirus company should release some of the uh, pieces or some of the small part of softwares of course they are softwares those softwares must be attached with your present antivirus so when you attach the new things new software 
new pieces of software, definitely they know the new antiviruses, right? That's why antivirus must be updated. Okay, remember this. If you have antivirus, definitely you have to update it regularly. Maybe once, uh, uh, once a week or twice a week. Right? Maybe every day there may be antivirus. Sorry, there may be updates. So if you have internet, it's it's easy, right? You can give automated update there. So with the help of automated update, automatic update, you can update when you are connected to internet. There is no need for click on the update icon or update. It can automatically update it when you are connected to internet. Okay, so remember this is the first and foremost uh, precaution to be taken, installing antivirus and not only installing, updating it. Okay, second. Scan removable storage devices such as USB drive with antivirus. Of course, this is another important one. We already discussed that uh, infected uh, removable storage devices such as pen drives, right? Such as uh, any other uh, external devices like external hard disks, right? Uh, maybe CDs, everything can be the medium to spread viruses. Not only virus, right? I'm talking about virus, but re remember it, it, it is also be uh, suitable for worms, trojan horse, hijack, everything, right? So these infected uh, external storage devices must be scanned before you use them in the computer because they are infected, right? So when they have infections, virus infections or worm, they can easily be uh, spread to your computer, right? So before you start using them, as soon as you plug them into your computer, try scan them with the help of antivirus, right? So when they are scanned, you know, viruses are detected and immediately they are removed, okay? So this is another way uh, for uh, for uh, removing or for stopping these malwares. Okay, let's take another one. Using uh, authorized software, right? You have to use authorized software all the time. What does it mean? See, uh, we have licensed software and also we have pirated software. You know these words? So if, if you want to use a licensed software like MS Office, right? Or a Windows operating system or a Photoshop, you have to purchase or you must purchase them. If you don't purchase and if, if you are trying to copy from your friend or someone, definitely it is an illegal activity. Okay, it's an illegal, it's, a, it's an, another story. But at the same time, while it is illegal, it is also be harmful to your computer because most of the malwares can use your uh, can use your pirated software as their I mean, as their living places, right? So they are the potential uh, areas to hide. So if you are downloading uh, a licensed software from website in an illegal way, don't forget that that particular software may have some malware, right? So don't download or don't use any licensed software without purchasing, right? So definitely purchase them and use it. But if you are trying to copy from anyone, if may, it, that person may be a trusted person, but don't copy them. Those pirated software, which, which means the, the software that you have been copied, right? That may have malware right so when you install that particular software in your computer definitely the virus can easily be spread it right so it is important if it is licensed software if it when it comes to open source it's okay right free and open source softwares can be downloaded and installed but i'm talking about licensed softwares right so if it is licensed software try purchasing and install right don't copy from someone and use it because these unauthorized softwares can be uh, can be uh, the living places or potential places for these malwares. Okay, right. So when you use your computer, you have to keep these three methods or so three precautions all the time. Right. 
but don't think that these are enough for for protect your computer generally for for general purpose these are these are important but if you are a person who uses internet right if you are a person who uses internet all the time you must take taking uh, take care of some other activities in addition to them right in addition to these three things you need to focus on some other safety measures right so these three are for all the computer users including the people who use internet or the people who don't use internet doesn't matter right so all these computer users must follow these three things what are they installing antivirus and updating them always use authorized softwares right don't use the pirated one and also the next one uh, you have to scan your removable storage devices before use them in your computer of course you have to scan them using antivirus okay right but the people who use internet have to focus on some other uh, other i mean methods right so let's take them one by one right look at my heading when computer is connected to internet the heading is same how to be safe from malware even the previous heading also same right how to be safe from malware here also how to be safe from malware but this is a special category when computer is connected to internet so when you are connected to internet you need to focus on some of the additional things okay let's take them number one always visit to secure websites it is important right so whenever you visit to website you you must make sure that they are trusted right so don't visit to any websites which uh, are which are not known which are not known by you so always use to trusted website because some of the untrusted websites so some of the unknown websites may have malware right so sometimes your antivirus can spread you may have the experience right sometimes whenever you try to uh, enter a website right your antivirus immediately identifies that as a, as a malware website and immediately blocks the url you may have the feel i mean you have, you may have that experience right when you are trying to enter to a website your antivirus identifies and shows a message that your url is blocked or something right your url is blocked since it has a malware or something so always visit to trusted website don't visit to any websites which you never be you never visited okay right second avoid opening suspicious emails so when you receive an uh, receive uh, a suspicious email better avoid opening right don't open uh, suspicious because those suspicious email may have malware so how to identify suspicious maybe the uh, maybe the mails which are uh, which are sent by unknown people so when you when you have a new mail in inbox which was sent by an unknown person right so better avoid it right so better uh, you have to be uh, careful because that that particular email may have malware okay that is the second one avoid opening suspicious email third one avoid clicking on unknown advertisements look at the heading how to be safe from malware not only virus huh? we are talking about how to save from malware it doesn't focus on on a single malware we are generally talking right so this heading includes everything virus can be there worm maybe trojan horse hijack everything right okay avoid clicking on unknown advertisements yes that is also important because we already discussed about some of the malware uh, malware can be spread through advertisements especially uh, this uh, adware you know adware always comes to our computer through uh, advertisements so when we see some colorful attracting uh, advertisements we click on them and when we click on them you know this adware 
is simple, easily I mean, spread to your computer. So try avoiding on clicking uh, unknown advertisements or attractive advertisements. Okay, so that is another one. Take great care. Look one second. So you may think that it is it is sometimes hard to avoid. Uh, hard to identify unknown advertisements or malicious advertisements. See, it's simple because if it is a useful advertisement, it shows the product name or maybe the, the price and everything. So it looks like a legitimate advertisement. But if it is a malicious advertisement, it, it looks like I have already shown, right? It shows like uh, you won 1 million or you won a computer. So you got a visa for one country. Right, so you got, uh, I mean, uh, fly ticket for that one. So such things are always, I mean, uh, not legitimate. So they sh they show the nature, right? So by looking at them as a person, as an individual, you should definitely realize that they are not uh, not meaningful or not uh, legitimate, right? So it is important. So identify those, uh, I mean advertisements, right? Uh, illegal advertisements should be very, very key. Okay, next one. Take great care on email attachments. That is also important. Generally, email is not the problem. The attachment is the problem. Because even if I get an email, I can see easily open. But when it has links or uh, attachment, it is very harmful because See, if, if I got, if I received an email with an attachment, there is always a possibility for having malware because that attachment, it's not, not uh, it's a file, right? It, it is a file, it may be any type of file. So when I download that file, you know, there, there, there is a possibility to come virus too or worm too. So definitely I have to be very careful when I, uh, when, when I'm dealing with attachments, email attachments. Okay, right, that is the point. Next one, last one. Don't enter personal information in any forms or links without checking security. We discussed. So never ever give any personal information on any online forms or on any means because they may be uh, phishing. Right, that, that action may be phishing. So we discussed about phishing. Phishing always uh, needs sensitive information from you through emails, right? Like through uh, filling online forms and sending some information through links. So whenever you ask to send some vital information, sensitive information, you must be very careful. You must think about phishing at that particular time, right? So don't enter any personal information on any online form so on any uh, hyperlinks okay so if you are a user who uses internet you must follow these uh, precautions too right the, the ones which i mentioned earlier are very important they are very important for all the computer users right not only computer users maybe for mobile users too right you know mobile can be affected by some of the malwares so even if you are a mobile user you have to take care of them. But the people who use internet have to focus on some additional things. These are the additional things, okay? Check them again. Always visit your secure websites. Avoid opening suspicious emails. Avoid clicking on unknown advertisements. Taking great care on email attachments, which means you have to handle them carefully, right? If they are suspicious, if they are uh, coming from unknown people, try avoiding, try not, not to click, right? Don't enter personal information in any forms or links without checking the, uh, their security or without uh, checking the confirmation, right? Okay. So these are the things to be considered to be safe as a user, right? If you want to be safe from these malwares, you have to follow these things, right? So among them, the most very most important thing is I would say that virus, antivirus, right? Using antivirus is, is very, very important. But at the same time, whenever you use internet, try uh, following these things, right? The things which are on your screen, very important, uh, you must follow. But uh, fortunately, 
whenever you use a proper antivirus, if you are using a proper high security antivirus, it can uh, do most of things. See, look at them. So whenever you try to visit an unsecure website, your antivirus blocks. Sometimes when you download an email attachment with uh, infected malware, your antivirus blocks. So fortunately, if you have a secure antivirus or proper antivirus which, antivirus, which have been purchased, definitely you, even though you don't follow these things on your screen, your antivirus can do that, right? It, your antivirus can do that for you, right? So, but as a person, try to do that, okay? So these are the things. Right, so let's take a brief introduction about antivirus, right? So hope uh, everyone has an idea about antivirus. I already described. Antivirus is a, is a small program used to detect the malware and remove them. Not only for detecting, after detect, detecting them, it can uh, remove them, right? That is antivirus. Remember, it is a system software because it comes under utility, okay, right? So as I discussed earlier, initially antivirus was developed or antivirus software was created in order to detect virus. So that, that might be the aim for developing antivirus. But with time, uh, the aim was changed because uh, with time, uh, we have so many malwares, not only virus, worms there. So it is tough to use multiple uh, I mean, uh, safeguards or multiple virus guards for detecting virus, worms, and other things separately, right? So it is very tough. So uh, they think about that and use one single software in the name of antivirus, right? And uh, detect all the other things, okay? So antivirus software uh, can also be called virus guard. Huh? Nowadays, people use the word virus guard because it's a guard for your computer, right? Okay. So look at this description given. It is a system software designed to prevent, detect, and remove malware, sorry, malware infections in computers. Okay. Originally designed to detect and remove viruses from computers. Initially, right? Initially, it is the aim. But protects against wide variety of threats, including the other types of malware software such as browser hijackers, Trojan hosts, worms, spyware, adware, bots, and ransomware. Almost all the malware things, malware activities can be detected and can be removed by antivirus. That's why I told you to use a, a proper antivirus software in your computer. Right? always purchase that because antivirus software is available for even free of charge, trial versions, some of them open source, right? But to get a complete protection, always purchase an antivirus. But at the same time, you have to, you have to, I mean, uh, check the ratings of the antivirus because some websites, some companies have the ra ra rankings of antivirus, antivirus software from time to time. So try uh, Google them and find the best antivirus. You can't say the best because uh, everyone has its own own beauty, but when people use, they recommend some of the antivirus because from time to time we use different antiviruses. So with the with the help of some people around the world, right, they put the ranking. So if if some some antivirus or if one antivirus is ranked as first, try using in your computer, right? Then only you can have complete protection, right? So I have listed some of the antivirus software here. Even though they are not important for the exam, I have listed, look here, uh, Kaspersky antivirus, ESET antivirus, people in this part of the world mostly use these two, right? Kaspersky antivirus, some of them feel that ESET is, is, uh, is the best one. But again, I, I can tell you that these are people opinion, right? Everyone has its own idea, but uh, you can't say that it is best or that is best, right? Everyone has its, uh, I mean, different uh, features. Norton antivirus, Bitdefender antivirus, Avira antivirus, Microsoft Security Essential, this is from Microsoft, generally issued for Windows operating system, uh, Microsoft Security Essential, it's an open source. 
and I have listed some of the other two here. Look here, uh, AVG antivirus. What else? Avast, Avast, McAfee, right? McAfee antivirus, F Secure. So trend, there may be many, right? There may be many. There is no need for remembering all of them, but remember maybe two or three. And you can easily remember ESET, Kaspersky, maybe uh, Norton, right? So remember that. Right, so that concludes uh, this one, malware. Okay, so we discussed all these things about malware. As I do normally do, I take enough time to explain that, right? At the beginning, we started off with the, with the I mean, damage just done by malware, right? So that is the first one, or that was the first one we, we, we discussed under malware. So we discussed about malicious so or harmful activities uh, done by malware. So we discussed many things, right? Uh, demolishing files, unable to open uh, softwares, unable to install softwares, computer keep, I mean, uh, rebooting. So we discussed many things. But note in that point, we didn't focus on one malware. We generally talked. Then we took all the malwares and discussed about them, especially their behaviors, right? Now after discussing about all the malware today, we, we discuss about how to prevent them, how to be safe from them, right? So with this heading, this malware is over. Okay, so I hope that we, we discussed all the negative impact, all the limitations, all the uh, issues created by ICT. So ICT's, ICT has created so many things. We discussed them category by category. Okay, let me take a quick reminder. We discussed about uh, legal issue, health issue, uh, what else, ethical issue, environmental issue, physical and logical is issue, social issue. Uh, at last, we discussed about malware. So all these things, right, all these things, all these variety of things are problems created by ICT. So if ICT is not developed, you know, these things never be experienced. None of us experience such things, but we all experience such things in our day-to-day -day life, not only one, right? So we all, in, uh, I mean, face all these things. We face legal things, we face ethical thing, things, maybe physical, see, it's very tough. Simultaneously, you have to face all, face all these problems. They have different, uh, different uh, I mean, uh, characteristics. So when all of them attack you simultaneously, it is too tough to, uh, I mean, digest, right? So it is very, very hard, right? But if it is ICT, if ICT is not developed, it is very, very good, right? We never face such problems. So try understanding the harmfulness of ICT, right? Okay, right. So let's move to another heading. Still, we are in the last unit, right? Last unit is not completed, but as, as I said earlier, we almost completed maybe 95 or 98, I mean, percentage of the syllabus, right? So we have a few parts, okay, right. So hope you remember about the heading which we discussed uh, a few days back. Mm, okay, oh, let me take one more, one more minute. Before I take that one, let me uh, take one more thing. So I forgot to mention earlier. So we talked about virus. So as a student, who studies ICT, better remember the first virus which was created, right? Uh, so, so it's a common, common thing of general knowledge, right? So the first virus which was created uh, is known as, sometimes it's known as Pakistan virus, but uh, mostly it is known as brain virus, brain. brain virus. So sometimes people used to call that as brain boot sector virus, boot sector virus. Brain virus, brain boot sector virus, even it is also known as Pakistan virus. It is because it was developed or it was created by two brothers in Pakistan uh, back in 1980, I think 86 or something, right? So back, uh, back to 1980s, 86, 
this virus so first ever virus was created by two uh, brothers from pakistan so named as uh, brain virus uh, or brain boot sector virus sometimes called pakistan because it was created in pakistan virus but though it is it is always mentioned as uh, boot virus sorry brain virus but there may be some argument there may be some debate because some some books or some websites suggest some suggest that this uh, this is not the first virus some other viruses are already i mean formed or something but i think it is widely accepted right people accept this one as a first ever computer virus created uh, to affect computer right so around 80s okay so this is uh, uh, this is for your general knowledge right i'm not sure whether it is asked in your exams right but uh, for general knowledge this uh, this is useful okay right right uh, look here uh let's come back uh, right uh, we discussed an important issue uh, a few days back uh, what is it uh, this one de-skilling right we discussed about de-skilling So everyone remembers, right? De-skilling. So de-skilling is uh, is a problem because what is it? Vacating uh, skilled labor's work, right? So when ICT is developed, skilled workers, skill, skilled laborers have to vacate their jobs, right? Because they have been replaced uh, by uh, by uh, ICT, right? so ICT devices, right? So they are replaced. So definitely it is an issue because uh, skilled workers do not have any jobs now. Okay, right. But at the same time, it is an issue, right? It's an issue. At the same time, we can, uh, we can debate in a different corner, in different opposite direction. Look here. Even though people say that ICT, when ICT is developed, people, uh, I mean, vacate their job or people, people uh, lost their job, it may be okay. But at the same time, when ICT is, is developed, there are job opportunities related to ICT are created. Those new jobs were not found in the past, right? People engaged in manual activities in the past. That's the reason why they lost their job. But when ICT was developed or when ICT is developed, some new jobs, some new job opportunities are created. Computer related, ICT related, jobs are created so even even though you just you, you argue in a negative way like people's always uh, i mean lose their jobs but remember you can't say like that because at the time okay you may argue that people are losing the job at the same time some peoples are getting new jobs because now new jobs are created so those who have enough skill to meet such jobs definitely they have they have been employed so it is tough to say, or it is not good, it is not fair to say that people lost their jobs. Maybe some, some people may lose, but at the same time, you know, people get new jobs, right? So we have to discuss about some of the job opportunities in ICT related areas. Or in other words, we have to discuss about ICT related job opportunities. Okay, there are plenty, right? Not one, not two, maybe hundreds, right? There can be hundreds of jobs related to ICT, which need some different skills. You know, if it is ICT, it is not a small area. There may be so many areas, even as a student, you can understand, right? You know, programming is one area. We, we talked about networking, we studies networking, computer networking, then maybe another area, maybe telecommunications, networking, that is of course related to ICT. Even, you know, nowadays mobile applications are very, very famous, right? People use mobile applications. So mobile application is something different. So it is an area. Even we discussed about databases, right? So managing or creating databases, managing. So there may be another area. So it is not a small area. ICT is very wide. So when ICT is very wide, you know, 
there are hundreds of job, job opportunities right so we will have to take some of them not all the all the job uh, jobs related to ICT we will take some of the most common jobs relate in related uh, in relation with ICT okay so let's check them right look okay, here I will uh, list some of them not all uh, look at the heading technology related employment opportunities or even we can say ICT related job opportunities everything is same right look at them first computer program I will briefly explain about this job now uh, after the, after I mean taking all these things computer uh, information system analyzed even you can say information system analyst right database programmers and analysts right database programmers or even database programmers and analysts i will explain mobile application developer each and everything is a, is a profession right? it is a job in ict mobile application developer okay i will explain network and system security specialist in a job network managers and administrators right even you can say network administrators software engineer technical sales specialist telecom manager and website developers website developers look all these things are different jobs so definitely they need different skills so if you want to become as a computer programmer you need to you need to be expected uh, with some some uh, eligibilities you must have some both academic and some other other things right so not all the people can become as computer programmer you can't say that you follow ict or someone follows an ict degree and become as a computer program because his study so the the content of his uh, subject should have should be related to computer programming so what i'm trying to tell you is to become as one as a programmer or as another profession you must have the skill so that skill can be improved using your i mean uh, formal academic career using your i mean after passing the a, a levels you have to i mean complete a degree from a university recognize a degree from a university and if your degree content has has equal uh, things so has uh, has eligible things for for uh, for become as a computer programmer programmer or for become as a mobile application developer then you can but otherwise you are not selected for this one right so it is important right so let's start from the computer programmer so i hope that the programmer is not not a new term for you because we already uh, used this word in uh, in a system development life cycle I, I think in unit number two right in information systems we use this name computer program it's very simple who is it computer program is the person simply who writes the program computer program computer program is the person who writes the computer program that may be okay right for for someone who studies in grade 11 it is okay right uh, but try to understand that writing a program is nothing writing instruction to computer to do tasks so who is computer programmer he is a person who writes instructions to computer to do some certain tasks have you understood so if you are if you are writing a uh, developing a small game right so you know you are a programmer programmer who who developed that small game so what happened when developed the comp uh, that particular game you wrote some instruction to computer to do some activity so that is computer program have you understood so computer programmer should have some programming knowledge background right you must be you must have some of the programming uh, background like knowing programming languages especially high level programming languages we discussed right you you should know some of the high level programming languages like java maybe python right some c c plus plus 
even the one that you study right pascal pascal is not used commonly for commercial i mean surface but it is it is also there in the picture right so if you want to become as a programmer you you should be fluent in handling uh, computer programming languages because computer programming languages are used for writing programs this is a computer program have you understood so don't uh, don't analyze every every prof profession in detail just take a small idea that is enough okay so that is the first one we have some other opportunities i will briefly explain them everything one by one maybe in the next class not today so today also we covered a little area right we covered the remaining malwares and also we discussed how to prevent them finally we took the job opportunities created i told you that the development of ICT right uh, made the people to vacate their job right so that is a negative part at the same time we can argue that ICT creates new jobs so that is a positive part so here we are discussing some of the positive things right so jobs new jobs related to ICT okay so that's all for today we will discuss uh, the remaining jobs and their their uh, roles right every every job has its own role we will discuss everything later right so it's enough uh, thank you